that's late today. There were a bit of technical difficulties, which we've worked out. I'm Chef AJ, and welcome to Chef AJ Live, the show where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Today's guest is very special because I worked with her many, many years in Los Angeles before I moved, producing an annual conference called Healthy Taste of LA. She's not only here today as an amazing chef and going to make some delicious food for you, but she's also a registered dietitian and she really is doing good in her, the world along with her husband, Reverend John Jensen. They have a church in the South Bay called the South Bay Adventist Church where we produced our events for many years, but they also do wonderful community events for free, including the Best of Nature Cooking School, which I'm sure she'll talk about. Please welcome my friend and colleague, Susan Jensen. Thank you so much for doing this. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, good to see everybody. Welcome to the show. Um, I'm really excited that I can be here and I can help you guys with recipes and give you some encouragement along your journey. Um, one thing I say is we're all at different places on our plant-based journey and it's just fine. And, um, and I hope that you can learn something today about the recipes that I have. Um, so first of all, I have a roasted veggies and lentil salad. You probably have access to the recipe. And I've done a lot of prep ahead of time. And one thing about a plant-based diet, um, we really encourage eating a lot of vegetables. And if you eat, eat a lot of vegetables, then you gotta do a lot of chopping. Well, some people don't like the chopping, but I kind of like it. It's kind of like a therapy for me because I like knitting and knitting is very repetitive. Chopping is kind of the same thing. But I've done a lot of pre-chopping and you can see here, there, here's the sweet potatoes and the carrots that have been already chopped for the, the roasted veggie salad. And I'm using a copper pan here. I don't have an air fryer, but this thing works great because it's kind of got a loose um, what, weave here or something so the air can flow. But I also have a convection oven and I, I've been interested in an air fryer, but you know, one more, one more gadget, one more thing on the counter, I don't know. So anyways, this works great for roasting and I'm just gonna put it in the oven for a little bit. The oven's already preheated. So the oven's at 425 and I'll take about 10 minutes um, to do that. And I've got the, well, let me set the timer. So I don't get, all right, timer set. And um, I've already chopped the zucchini and onions also. I've distributed them into two pans. Now this is another way that you can roast um, the still pat. Um, mats here, silicone mats. They are really good non-stick, and you can roast on these pans. Um, you can bake your veggie burgers on these pans. You can bake uh, banana oatmeal cookies on these pans. Nothing sticks. It's really great. So these are the um, zucchini and onions that don't take as long to roast as the sweet potato and the carrots. So we'll put those in a little bit later after the, the timer goes. Um, so the lentils that I use are these packaged lentils from Trader Joe's. You can cook your own lentils, um, however you want to do it, but these are just easy. Um, and I like them. They're really tasty. It has lentils. It has some salt in there, some essential oils, cloves, laurel, thyme, pepper, and some garlic. So they're a little bit seasoned. Um, but this package here, I use that and, um, it's air packed or what do you call it, sealed. So what I do is I try to squeeze it because it's really stuck together and then um, squeeze it and squeeze it before you dump, whoops, <laughs> before you dump it out of the package and then you don't have to um, break it up as much in the bowl. So lentils are a, a legume and they're super healthy. And they're, and they're one thing that when you're plant-based you want to eat a lot of beans because beans have really good carbohydrates. They have that stick with you, you know, that you don't get hungry so quick. And it also has a lot of good fiber and vitamins. And fiber is really important. And when you eat a lot of vegetables, you're going to get a lot of fiber. Um, and the farro, I've already cooked the farro, but I also use this 10 minute farro from Trader Joe's. It cooks up real quick. 
And farro is a grain, kind of like an ancient, ancient grain, but again, you're getting good carbohydrates, you're getting good fiber and, and different vitamins from the, the grain versus the, the legume. So um, here's a cup of cooked farro, put it in there. I'm gonna mix it up a little bit. Susan, there's a question, where'd you get that beautiful roasting pan? What kind is it? Oh, it's, I got it from, Am wait, did I get it from Amazon or Bed Bath & Beyond? I know that they both have them. Is it called Copper Chef or something like that? It's been a while, but it's a nice roasting pan. I really, really like it. If you don't have an air fryer or if you don't have a good, good oven. Anyways, you can just blend these together, the um, lentils and the, the farro. And you can use, I have the seasonings here, um, rosemary and thyme, and it kind of complements with the sweet potato and the onions. And um, it's just a nice flavoring that goes with the, the balsamic. So the rosemary and the thyme, we'll put that in there. So we're just doing this ahead of time while the roast, the veggies roast, um, just to kind of let the flavors marinate. And the vinegar that I've used is something that Chef AJ used once for one of her demos and it's low acid. And one thing about vinegar that really kind of turns me off is that it seems very acidic if you use it as a dressing, but this low acid um, vinegar is really good. So this is the dressing. Um, I know that there's a lot of different vinegars out there. You can use whatever you like, but I think a low acid would be the one that you would want to use in a, a dish like this. Well, Susan, now that you mentioned low acid, you might not know this because I forget to sometimes say it on the show, but we have a big supporter of the show and their names are Thomas and Ethel and they created a wonderful line of these low acid reduced balsamic vinegars called California balsamics. And just for being on the show, you're going to get two bottles in the flavor of your choice. Oh, wow. Awesome. That's <laughs> so cool. What a great thing. I know I've, I've had some of those. I went and got the sample pack online once. And it's really fun. There's so many different flavors that they have. So four tablespoons is about a quarter cup. And you know, all these recipes here that I have today, you can adjust everything. Um, there's really no science to this. It's just preference, your flavor choice. And um, some people want maybe want less uh, vinegar. Some people may want more. It just depends. You just adjust it however you want. And you know what? Even the veggies, you can use different veggies. If you want eggplant or if you want, um, let's see, what else could you use? Well, tomatoes would be kind of too juicy. Uh, well, I'm drawing a blank. But anyways, any, any kind of roasted veggies go great with this. Okay, so we've got this here. We'll put it aside and um, we'll wait for our um, veggies to roast. Put this over here and we'll work on the, the zucchini salad. Anybody growing zucchini in the garden this year? <laughs> you have to go out like every day to make sure that they're not turning into baseballs, right? So um, I picked this zucchini this morning and I have one zucchini plant and I get well, I have two, but one's not doing very, very good. But one, I get maybe one zucchini a day or every other day. It's pretty, pretty incredible. So we got a lot of zucchini and um, I wasn't sure what to do with all the zucchini. So I made zucchini cookies and zucchini bread. And I tried something new, zucchini pickles. We'll see how those turn out. But this salad here is one of my favorites. I've been making it for years. And it's um, a zucchini salad, but it's got a lot of veggies in it. Um, and I, I love veggies. I love, and the thing about these salads that I'm doing today are very hearty. When I mean hearty, I mean they have good carbs in them. They have the, the beans and like the, um, the grains. You know, the, the zucchini salad has the black beans and has the corn in it. And um, it's just really good. And the flavors are bright. I like bright flavors. And there's a, lot, a nice mix of um, texture too. And that's one thing I learned in school, you know, uh, among everything is um, textures. When you serve a meal, it's good to have a variety of textures. When you serve a meal, it's good to have a variety of colors. And um, the zucchini salad does have a variety of colors. And um, 
flavors, textures, um, color, even, you know, everything. All right, so let's make this zucchini salad. Um, there's gonna be a little bit of chopping going on here, so don't mind me. Uh, I've never taken any, any cutting knife skills, so um, <laughs> we'll just enjoy the journey here. So like I said, I like to chop. I have a food processor and a food processor could do this just fine, but there's something about chopping that I like. It's just calming and therapeutic. So you want to chop your zucchini. You can chop it as big or small as you like. One thing that I like about salads is the food that I make. I like to make them smaller bite size because when you put a spoonful of it in your mouth, you want to have all the, the goodness in that one, one bite. <laughs> that's, always, that's always fun for me to have that one bite of goodness. Okay. Any questions, AJ? Um, well, I, I, mean, I do have a question, but it's more a dietitian-y type question. Should I ask it right now? Someone sent it in in advance. Sure, that'd be great. Okay, thanks. And I love when you guys send them in. Thank you so much. So Barbara says, I am a new vegan because my plant-based nephrologist insisted as it was the best opportunity to improve my stage four chronic kidney disease. It has helped, I am now stage three. And I just wanna add, I've known people that have reversed it completely. I just so, so, that, so keep going, Barbara. My question is the restricted fruits and vegetables which limit potassium, sodium, and phosphorus is very difficult for me to balance. Many foods are low in potassium, but high in phosphorus, et cetera, and vice versa. I have some renal cookbooks, but they are not helpful to me because they're filled with tofu, which I can't have for another reason. Do you have any suggestions? I don't know if I'm getting enough or too much protein. Can you help me make sense of this? And I know you are a real dietitian working in a hospital, so maybe you've come across patients with, with situations like this. Yeah, I... Um, I've, yeah, I do. I work with some uh, patients and I work in a building that has a lot of elderly patients and elderly, I mean, over 70, 80, and they may have diabetes. They may have kidney disease. Um, they're not going to be plant-based. They're not really going to be interested in plant-based. So I don't, to tell you the truth, I don't have a lot of experience with, um, kidney disease and plant-based diets. But what I've read and what I've heard is that plant-based diet done well with supervision um, can be very, very effective. And, oh, excuse me, timer's going. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is add the zucchini and the onions in here. And I'm not, I'm not gonna flip the, um, I'm not gonna flip the sweet potatoes and carrots because they're on that. We'll just roast these for another 10 minutes. Okay. But yes, um, yeah, sorry, I, I can't really help you specifically with that. I know that it's a challenge, but it can be done. Um, I think if you find the right dietitian and doctor to help you with that, um, please do. I think that's very important for you to pursue. So yeah. Well, as luck would have it, we have a plant-based nephrologist coming up on Friday, a Kaiser uh, physician uh, named Dr. Sean Hashmi. So maybe we can get it answered on Friday if she'll tune in then as well. Yes, please do. That's awesome. Okay, well, I'm going to continue back with uh, um, zucchini salad here. So we've got zucchini. And you know, you don't need to measure. I have like amounts there, but um, this is another one of those things where you don't really need to measure. Um, two cans of black beans. I just get those at Costco, you know, why not? So they've been rinsed and drained, put those in there. And some people like to cook their own beans. You can do that. That's no problem. Um, and I have here one package of frozen corn from Trader Joe's and dump that in there. I've already diced the um, bell pepper. So as you can see, there's a lot of color going on here. The green, the brown, the yellow, the red. If you don't want to use bell pepper, some people don't. You can use tomato to add color. That would be good. Um, so we're going to chop some 
green onion. I like to use mostly the tops of the green onion because I don't like the, the strong flavor of the, the root part, the bottom part, but I do save that and use in stir fry or our soups or anything like that. So we'll just cut up the green onion. Whoops. Kathy loves your colander and wants to know what kind it is. You need to have a, a little Amazon store with all your wonderful yeah. products. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this little yellow one. I know it's the perfect size. It's the perfect size for strawberries, for grapes, for blueberries. Um, Cause just has my husband and I, and we don't need a whole big colander. I think I got it at, um, oh, what's that fancy? Um, Sur la top? Yeah, I think I got it there. Years and years ago, my, my daughters and I, we wanted to go to some fancy store. And so I think I got it there. I don't know, but it's, it's great. It's my favorite. Okay, any other questions? Yeah. Well, tell us about, you know, what is, what's it like knowing what you know about the power of plant-based nutrition and working in a clinical setting where people just aren't gonna do it? Oh, is it frustrating? It's really frustrating, especially with elderly patients. You know, I have, I have compassion for them that they've lived their life however they've been doing things and they don't wanna change. But I, I, I think, oh, if you'd only known about plant-based maybe 20 years ago, you would have been on a much better path. Um, there was one day that I was um, doing my assessments and I had about six people that I had to assess. And I think all of them were obese, morbidly obese. And I just, my heart just sinks, you know? I just, I, I know that this, the, plant-based diet is the way to go for so many reasons, not just health, but I just, I feel sometimes it's depressing, you know, and I want to help them, but they're just not at a stage in life that they, they want any help. And um, I get a lot of people say, well, there was one man, he's on a low cholesterol diet and he's also on Lipitor. And his, his thing, what he says is, why am I on a low cholesterol diet? I'm on Lipitor. That's all I need. I'm like, ah, oh, no, you need the low cholesterol diet, a plant-based diet more than you need the Lipitor. I mean, they're both, I guess, essential, but come on. Yeah, you do, you do need that plant-based diet, but oh, it's just, it's, it's frustrating. So, you know, it's really nice with our church and our outreach that we have at our church. Um, thanks to this virus, we haven't been able to do any cooking demos or programs in our church, but um, people that come to that, they just love it. They, they want to change, they want to learn, and that's the kind of audience that's really fun to, to help and to talk to. I'm sure you, you know that too, honey. Right, well, well look, guys, that's how I met the Jensen's, and, and all roads lead to McDougal. You know, if it wasn't for Dr. McDougal, I wouldn't be here today professionally, that's for sure. I mean, I'd still be vegan and stuff. But uh, I had was given my big break. I had been a culinary instructor since 2000, and I was given my big break by uh, being hired by Dr. McDougal to be a chef at his Celebrity Chef Weekend, which was the last time he had it, which was in June of 2009. And a little bit later that year, I get an email from Susan's husband, Pastor John Jensen, to come speak at the church. And I did a lot of speaking at churches. And I thought it was just going to be one of these things where, you know, you get there and there's five little overweight older grandmas there and you, you know, make a smoothie or whatever. And I get there and there's like a hundred people and I'm like, whoa, and they're live streaming it everywhere. And that's when we got together and started doing these, uh, these events called Healthy Tastes of LA. And they, they were very successful having, you know, 500 people, we eventually had to move out of the church to the Civic Center. We had great keynote speakers like Esselstyn, Campbell, uh, Barnard, McDougall. Our first was Hans Deal. So we had a lot of fun doing these and we had these private dinners. But the cooking school grew from this room with 100 to, you know, it's, it's huge. Talk about how you guys started. It's been many years and even people watching live can just go to your website and, and watch it. That's right. Yes. On our um, church website. Um, yeah, on our church website, um, we have our cooking school link. Um, I think it's called cooking school link. But anyways, you'll see all the cookbooks from years and years that we have because each year we produce a cookbook, which is a collection of recipes that I've gotten. But we also have there's four nights and there's four different people um, giving recipe 
uh, demonstrations. And those, those recipes are contributed also. So we've had a lot of different people over the years. And, videos and, archive. and you can go to the archive link buck button and you can I'm, see. I'm posting it right now, by the way. So okay. people can check out all the wonderful recipes and all the other speakers. Southbaychurch.net. Yes. So the cooking school has a link and then the archive has a link where you can watch all the previous programs from way back. Yeah. 2009 was when I read, well, I went to McDougal and that's where I saw you, you, you crazy little lady there. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've, toned, I've toned down quite a bit since that performance, but yes, I, yeah. I guess. It was great. But anyways, um, yeah, so I went plant-based in, uh, I think it was 2009, 2008, but I read the China study by Dr. T. Colin Campbell. That's, that's, that's the, that was a clincher for me, you know, yeah. So I'm going to just work on chopping some uh, cilantro here. Now, everybody has a different way of doing things, of course. But it's also nice to see a different way. I don't have any fancy way to do it. I just like to bunch them up and um, just chop chop away. I keep the stems in there. I just pulled off the top of the, the bunch and rinsed it in water and just kind of chop away. If there's big pieces, that's fine. If there's little pieces, that's fine. Just kind of rolling it and keeping it together as much as possible. And I like a lot of cilantro in, um, the salad and if you don't want so much that's fine if you want more that's fine and if you don't eat cilantro i hear some people say that cilantro tastes like soap and i don't get that but uh, um, an herb that you could use i mean i suppose you could switch it out because cilantro and cumin and lime are kind of more of a the flavors go together if you wanted to switch up the the herb maybe parsley more neutral but um I mean, you could even add kale in here. I mean, this is a kind of salad where you can just add anything to it. Um, kale would be nice. Lots of health, healthy uh, attributes to that and also gives a green leafy look to it. So let's see, this is pretty much um, the main ingredients for it. So we'll mix it up and you can see how pretty the colors are coming together. And it makes a lot. This is a big bowl and this is a lot of salad. So if you want to cut it in half, that's perfectly fine. If you want, looks like it could use a little more zucchini because I like to have a lot of zucchini in this salad, but that's okay. So it's just a personal preference. And the seasonings are basically cumin, garlic powder, and some cayenne. And of course, you can adjust those seasonings however you want. Um, if you are on a salt-free diet, um, one thing that I learned from Dr. Greger, his cookbook, is that you zest the lime and you put that in the salad. And I've tried that and that's incredible. It's amazing how, you know, oh, timer's gone, hang on. Yeah. I think it's because the taste buds for sour sit right next to the taste buds for salty. So you can trick your taste buds by giving yourself something sour. Just make sure the lime's organic if you zest it. Yep. Right, right, right. yeah. Okay, so it looks like the uh, sweet potato and carrots are, are done. I'm just gonna put them over here. And Nothing like roasting for bringing out the sweetness in veggies or starches. Right, and I didn't even put any oil or anything on them. I mean, I'd, I'd like them a little bit more cooked. So I think I'm gonna leave the zucchini and onions for um, a little bit longer. Yeah, here's the other ones. So they're getting a little bit brown, but the zucchini doesn't look quite. So yeah, I'll give them maybe five more minutes. We'll see how that goes. Hey, speaking of balsamic vinegar, Thomas Allen is in the house. I was telling her, Thomas, that she's getting two free samples of your delicious vinegar just for being a guest on the show and she's very excited because she loves reduced vinegars yes yeah that's great so i'm just going to put in the the um seasonings here and you can adjust them how you like um if you like it more spicy you can put more chili in there well even chili powder is good if you want to use chili powder or cayenne Kind of a little bit hotter, but um, so you just mix it up really good. Um, I've made a couple of 
limes to squeeze in here, but the more limes, the better. I love the, the flavor of the lime juice in this salad. So four limes. Um, I didn't zest them, but if you want to use that, that's fine. Okay, so here are the other, here's the rest of the lime juice that I've already squeezed. So we'll put that in there. You wanna mix it up really good before you add the avocado um, because you don't wanna really smush the avocado when you put it in. So that's pretty good. That, and it's cold and it's refreshing and it goes with, they go with great with carrot dogs. Have you made carrot dogs, AJ? I haven't yet, but they look so good. I've seen people do that. Ann Esselstyn, for example, they look a lot of fun. Yeah, they're actually very good. I've tried them before and I've taken them to work because that's where I like to try different recipes at work and um, try to talk my workmates into going more plant-based. Even I told them, even if you just eat more vegetables, you know, because that's, that's key. I mean, if you eat more vegetables, you're doing your body so much good. So here's how I do an avocado. And my daughter and I, we have it back and forth about how to do avocados. Some people cut them in there, but I just, I do it on my hand um, like that. I have a, it's, it's a nice sharp knife too. And then I just go like that. So that's, that's how I cut my avocado. Don't ask me where I learned this because I didn't go to chef school, that's for sure. But uh, as a dietitian, it's fun to cook. And it's interesting when I first became a dietitian, oh, how many years ago has it been? Like 30, 40, well, 40 years ago. <laughs> but anyways, they'd be like, oh, you're a dietitian. And so you know how to cook. <laughs> like, oh, yes, I know how to cook, but that's not my job. That's funny. Have you ever been able to influence any of your coworkers who are dietitians or doctors? Um, uh, yes and no. Yeah, I think so. Um, I, my, a lot of my coworkers have come to our cooking classes. I can't say that they have converted to plant-based, um, but they are certainly more aware and open. They call themselves flexitarians. So they'll do whatever they want to do. You know, um, they do suffer from different, you know, obesity, diabetes, hypertension, and I just, you know, my heart goes out to them. But you know what? Um, you, you can preach till you're blue in the face about something, but unless that person feels it in their heart and want to do it, it's, it's not going to happen. So I think education, awareness, you know, encouragement is, is really key. And that's what I keep doing. Um, but I get a lot of teasing too, uh, about being plant-based and people say, oh, I could never do that. Even my sister said that, oh, I could never do that. I'm like, yes, you can, you can do whatever you want to do. Oh, but I can't give up my cheese. I got to have my cheese. Like, oh. Anyways. <laughs> so, so yeah. Somebody watching who's gluten-free and was wondering if they could use another grain in the salad. Yeah, um, let's see. Oh, what are those oats called that are whole, the whole oats? What do you the whole oat groat? Yeah, oat groat would be good because um, you want to cook them well, you don't want them too chewy, but they would add a nice texture, a nice grain to that. I think quinoa would be too smushy. You could do it, but- What about, what about wild rice or millet? Oh, wild rice is a great idea. Millet, I'm not sure, because you want to have something a little bit bigger and a little bit more with a chewiness to it, but wild rice is a great idea. Oh, timer's going again. Get the zucchini out. That's great. Um, there's a question on how do you make a carrot dog from Karen? Oh. And enjoy the about cutting up a jicama. I believe Chef Ramses Bravo in his PB a Bravo plant-based cooking course does show that. I think it's the same as you cut any round thing. You make the stabilizing cuts and then you peel it around. Pretty sure I saw him do that either on a Facebook Live or in his class. Huh. So, wow. Faro is a whole grain, uh, but it's not. Okay. 
All right, so here are, um, I think these are good. They're, they're more well done. So we'll take those out and put them over here. Uh, so the zucchini and the onions are done. Yay. Turn it off. Okay, so, so I've got pretty much got the avocado done and you can put a whole avocado in there. Oh, this is looking so good. So about carrot dogs, um, in the summer before COVID, every month our church would go to the beach and have um, kind of like a party. beach party. You know, we'd bring veggie dogs and fixings. You know, one thing about our church is not everybody's plant-based, so we don't do everything plant-based. There's some, some um, things that we do 100% plant-based, but most of the people aren't. And if, if we're gonna impose plant-based on people, they're not gonna come. So we do veggie dogs, we do watermelon, and so- And corn. And corn, yeah, roast the corn in the, in the, um, in the what do you call it? Fire pit. Fire pit. <laughs> John doesn't have to whisper. He's welcome to come on and talk about it. Yeah, my, my husband, John, he's, he's here with the, the camera and the, he's, he's coaching me. But anyways, um, so my husband took a 30 pound bag of carrots and he wrapped them. Did you wrap them in foil? Wrap them in foil. Why don't you tell him? Wrap them in foil and he stuck them in the fire pit along with the corn for how many minutes? So it's six minutes on one side, then you flip the package of carrots over and it's six minutes on the other side. And that's also what we, we lay the, the, the fresh corn that's wrapped in aluminum foil. Uh, on a bed of coals and the ca ca uh, carrots wrapped up too. And then um, six minutes on one side, flip them over six minutes on the other side and they come out amazing. And the people who are there who are uh, hoping to eat a regular meat hot dog or they'll try a veggie dog, I encourage them. I say, try the carrot dog. You won't, you won't miss, you won't notice the difference. And I've had many people become believers in and embrace carrot dogs, uh, trying them down at the beach. Yeah, and there's no, he doesn't even add any seasoning to it. It's just carrots. That's and, amazing. Um, Maybe yeah. that sounds so good. Yeah, but you know, the, a lot of the um, carrot dog recipes, you, you can marinate them. And what I've found to making carrot dogs, there's a way that you can, you can marinate them and then you can, um, well, you steam them and marinate them and then roast them type of thing. And I found that that's, that worked better rather than just throwing them in the oven. I, I experimented, I did different ways of doing carrot dogs and I found that that's the best if you kind of steam them, soften them first a little bit and then um, marinate them and then roast them and get them kind of, you know, crisped up in the oven. Okay, I think we've got our um, zucchini salad here all done. It's uh, looking pretty yummy. I think you guys need to come over and help me eat this. I don't think my husband and I can uh, finish this off. <laughs> but there, there's this, uh, the zucchini salad. So we'll put that aside and uh, finish up our other salad. Let me move some of this away. So there's a question from Crystal. I'm really interested in more tips limiting the use of salt. As a dietitian, do you believe that salt is really bad? I would love, I love your advice to use the zest. As a dietitian, um, well, the way that the average American uses salt, yes, you know, don't, that's, I say don't use that. Um, in, in the clinical setting, in the hospital, if a patient has congestive heart failure or hypertension, the usual is three to four grams sodium. Um, and that is basically don't add salt at the table, don't cook with salt, and don't eat high salt foods, things that are uh, like pickles, um, sauerkraut, soups um, that have a lot of salt in them. Um, so that's kind of what we advocate if you're in a clinical setting. Um, the average American, it, it's, it's terrible. You know, the chips, oh my goodness, people who eat chips, Yet yeah, just yesterday, uh, one of the ladies at work, she brought in some little goodie bags that some church put together for all us employees, thanking us for, you know, working during this time. And guess what was in that goodie bag? What? Come on. Chips, uh, candy bars, cookies, 
And it's, it's ridiculous, you know? <laughs> so the average, average American eats way too much sodium. I do personally like to have a little salt in my food. I've tried it with and without. I know that salt is an acquired flavor. And I know that as I eat less and less salt, I notice it more and I don't need as much. But to tell you the honest truth, I do like a little salt. So, um, but I don't use a lot and I don't eat the, the junk food. So I'm doing my, myself a, a big service by that. And I don't have congestive heart failure. And I'm right. not going to get congestive heart failure. Right. <laughs> so, all right. Elspeth asks, is it okay to cook on aluminum foil? Um, I don't know. I, there's a lot of controversy about that. I would say avoid it as much as possible. Um, you know, yeah. What do you, what are your, yeah, well, and the chefs that I've had on that use it, they, they, they put a piece of parchment paper before the aluminum foil, like if they're wrapping something, for example. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I can ask her how she feels about coffee, Tracy, but as an Adventist, I mean, I guess Adventists are different, but traditionally, like when we had Hans Deal on, Adventists in general don't recommend coffee. Am I correct about that? That's correct. Yeah. Um, in general, um, some of the Adventists recommend a healthy lifestyle, and um, part of that is um, eating more plants, more plant-based, and avoiding stimulants like caffeine, um, alcohol, tobacco. Um, it's more of a lifestyle choice. It's not a, you know, doctrinal, doctrinal thing. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we advocate that kind of a more of a purist um, lifestyle. Yeah, it's simple. I mean, everybody does their thing, right? Exactly. So, all right, let's see if these are done. I know that you guys have a bunch of children and now grandchildren. Do they eat plant-based as well? Um, they're, let's see, they're vegetarian. Um, they can't give up their cheese. Um, but um, we eat plant-based when we're together. They don't impose their cheese on us, which is nice. Um, but yeah, they, they like to go to in and out <laughs> but you know, what are you going to say? <laughs> Wait, but in and out, but not for the meat, right? Right. But for their cheese, I guess they have these burgerless cheese bur burgers. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Uh, Joyce says for someone with osteoporosis, does Susan feel you need to avoid any vegetables? No, I don't, I don't believe so. I think that John, the more vegetables you eat, I don't know that there's any connection with that and osteoporosis. Um, yeah, especially the greens, they say eat a lot of greens if you have osteoporosis. Right, and also exercise. Exercise is important, weight bearing exercise. You know who I'd have loved to have on the show, but he passed away was Dr. Ellsworth Wareham. Oh yeah, he's such he's he was such a nice guy. Amazing, so, yeah. So pleasant, you know. Plant based for I think what forever, right? Well, I think completely vegan after fifty, and he lived to one hundred and five, and he was doing open heart surgery in his late nineties. Yeah, yeah, remarkable guy. Yeah, he came and spoke at our church a couple times, a few times, and he's just the nicest guy, you know, and very very calm and cool, collected about his lifestyle, but very proud and very um, influential. All right. Uh, let's see about, uh, Joyce has any kidney, kidney stones and veggies. Do you know anything about that? No, I don't know anything. I mean, I, I don't think that there is a, a direct relation between um, veggies and kidney stones. Okay. I think um, kidney stones are probably re related to more of the the junk food group um, and, you know, pl uh, meat. Right. And, and we'll have the nephrologist on Friday. If you come back, we can ask. And Diana, oh, you know, Diana, she says, what about nightshade vegetables for arthritis? I don't have any experience with that. Um, my, my approach to all that is, is try it. If it works for you, great. If it doesn't work for you, then try something else. But um, I don't 
want to encourage avoiding vegetables just because someone said that you should, but if it works for you, because we're all so different, something may work for you and it may not work for someone else. So I say it's worth a try. I don't know that there is some, that's, that's something across the board for everybody. Tell the story about the, um, the why they had um, juvenile onset diabetes. Oh, arthritis? Yeah. Yeah, um, my husband reminded me of a, a young family in our church. And this was when we were first advocating plant-based. And the dad came up to me, and I think his boy at that time was maybe four or five or six, something like that. And the dad came up to me and says, what do you think I should do about my boy? Um, he's got, he was just diagnosed with juvenile arthritis. I'm like, wow. And I had just read something about how dairy is awful for arthritis. So I said, well, you know, I've learned this and I think that give it a try, you know, try it for like two or three weeks, um, no dairy at all. And um, they did it. And he came back and three weeks later and he says, my boy doesn't have arthritis anymore. So, I mean, dairy is a huge culprit um, with arthritis. So um, that would be the first thing I would avoid in, at all, I mean, completely is the dairy if you have arthritis. Great. So here we have our roasted veggie salad. It's looking mighty good. And it smells pretty good with those herbs in there. And again, if you want to use more veggies, you can use more veggies, different grains, um, something chewy, something nutty flavored. That's always a good, good, um, ingredient for this salad. You guys want a bite? Here, have a bite. Uh, <laughs> I wish there was a way for us to smell it and taste it. That's the only thing in the show is right before lunch. It always makes me so hungry. So uh, we, have a, uh, we have a dietitian watching named Tim Marie, who was a previous guest, and she said, avoid high oxalate greens for kidney stones. Oxalate greens. Awesome. Green high in oxalate. Yep. Yeah, spinach and kale and those good ones. <laughs> Mustard greens, yeah. Yeah, so at our church, when we have our events and we always have food because it's very important to have food for people to sample. And when they taste the food and they realize that it's, it's pretty good, then they would more likely be um, practicing a more plant-based diet. So in my opinion, when you... Whenever you can, make something plant-based and share it with somebody just so they can see and, and taste and, and experience the goodness of how much, it, how, how good it tastes. That's really important. Yeah. Do you cook? I know you work full-time. Do, do you cook every day? Do you do any batch cooking? No, I don't do batch cooking. It's kind of like spur of the moment, whatever I've got, you know. My husband and I, we have different, different tastes, and so it, it just... It varies um, from what we do, but we're, we're pretty simple, basic people. You know, I like to cook and I like to try new recipes and, and, and experiment, but we're, when it comes right down to it, we're basic lentils, potatoes, beans, we eat a lot of beans, um, corn, rice, a lot of rice. Yeah, very what simple. Do you, what do you guys eat for breakfast and do you have an instant pot? Yes, we have an instant pot and we cook our potatoes. We, well, we do batch cook. Actually, uh, we batch cook potatoes. Once a week, we fill the Instant Pot with potatoes and we'll have them in their fridge all week long. And um, my husband loves eating potatoes for breakfast. This morning, I had five potatoes for breakfast. <laughs> Perfect. That's probably what I'll have for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, potatoes. If, if you are going plant-based and you find that you're getting hungry a lot, eat potatoes. For some reason, potatoes, 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 potatoes. What? What? Oh, oh potatoes, potatoes are very. Yeah, potatoes are very satisfying. They stick with you. They're they're awesome if you get hungry. Because I've heard a lot of people say, "Oh, I go plant based, and I don't. I, I'm always hungry. What do I eat?" I say, "Eat some beans and potatoes, and that will that will help your hunger." You know, big pot of beans, big bunch of potatoes. <laughs> 
Remember one, one of the times at Healthy Taste, we just, that's what we made for the lunch. And it was one of the most well-received lunches, just giving people potatoes. Yes. And it's so easy and it's so cheap. I mean, and it's such a good food. Potatoes have gotten such a bad rap from people. Um, and, but potatoes are excellent. And there's so much you can do with them. What do you eat for breakfast, Susan? I imagine you have to get to work pretty early as a dietitian. Well, um, I eat fruit, a lot of fruit, and I, I'm not a huge breakfast person. So I make these banana oatmeal cookies or like um, banana chickpea oatmeal cookies. And I make a whole bunch of them. And I, right now I've got some, I'm running out of those cookies and I've got some bananas that are starting to, to freckle and turn brown and I'm gonna make some more cookies. And I just, I don't know if you people have, have tried this, but you just take a banana or two that's really ripe. The riper the better because they're sweeter. And you just smash it up, put some oats in there. You can put um, nuts in there. You can put raisins, craisins. You can add anything you want in there, cinnamon, vanilla. And um, then you can put them in the oven. I just use a small scoop, just a really small little scoop like this. And I bake them and I keep them in the freezer and that's my breakfast. I'll take four little cookies. And I recently I've added chickpeas to them. Um, and they're so much heartier and I love them. It's great. You don't need any sugar, you nothing. They, they are delicious. It's a question if you cook your own beans in your instant pot or do you use canned or perhaps both? Both, we use both. We do lent a lot of lentils in the instant pot. Um, and I, I'll make a bean curry. And usually when I make a bean curry, I use black eyed peas and black beans and, and chickpeas. And I'll, I'll just use a bean curry and then I'll use the cans for that. But uh, we, do, we use both and it's, the Instant Pot is amazing. <clears throat> do you guys have time to exercise at all? Yeah, yeah, we do. We live about a half mile from the beach and uh, we get to go walking on the beach a lot. And we um, have our ex exercise equipment in our garage. And so we can work out in our, in our garage too. Um, yeah, it's... We have time. Got to make time for exercise. Absolutely. Do you have time for Netflix? <laughs> yeah, we do. Sit back and relax. <laughs> what are you guys watching? What? Because I always like to get recommendations from my guests. Oh, some some shows we start. Can't see me. Some some shows we start and it, they're just awful. Um, but I can't remember what we've watched. We actually watched a garden show once. It was a competition. I think it was filmed in, in, in England. It was really fun. People had to make stuff out of uh, flowers and branches and trees and leaves. And it was very artsy, but it was a, a fun competition to, and it was, it was a good show to watch. Yeah. So do you have a favorite memory from all the years of Healthy Taste of LA? If you don't have one, I have one and maybe you'll remember, but I'm just curious, all those conferences we did, do you have, is there anything that sticks out in your mind as like, wow, this was great or, you know, memorable? Well, um, I don't know. Well, I don't know why, but the first thing that came to my mind was when Hans Deal and his wife were there. And um, I think you remember that one, AJ. Um, That's the one. I, do you want to tell the story or should no, I? I will never forget that story. That was hilarious, but you, you, you can tell the story and my, I'm sure my husband has a story or two to tell too. But yeah. Okay. So uh, I hope, I hope, I don't think Dr. Deal would mind because this made him laugh too. Dr. Deal was a guest on the show and he's actually wanting to come back and do another presentation. So Dr. Deal was the very first person that supported us when we were starting out. Nobody wanted to come and speak at our conference. So he came and he was the keynote speaker. And so every year after we invited him as a VIP guest, him and his wife, Dr. Lily Deal. And we sat them in the front row because they were always friends with whoever the keynote was, whether it was Dr. Esselstyn or Dr. Campbell. And so so uh, there was no reserved seating. It was about a, a 300 seat auditorium. And so for that row, we would have uh, their names. And we just basically, you know, took a piece of paper on the computer and put a piece of tape on it. And it would say their name, Dr. Hans Deal, Dr. Lily Deal. But it would say reserved for Dr. Hans Deal, reserved for Dr. Lily Deal, et cetera. Well, anyway, so his wife, Lily, was not one of the scheduled speakers, but she really wanted a time slot. And we couldn't work her in. So she kind of 
if you will, horned your way in a little bit in Anne Esselstyn's demo and was demonstrating how to open a pomegranate. And she was wearing like a, a, a an outfit that was, I don't know if it was wool, but it was knit material. And um, so when she got up on stage, somehow the sign that was taped to Dr. Jill's chair that said, reserved for Dr. Hans Deal was now on her derriere. And she walks up and this is being live stream and she, everybody looks at this beautiful woman with a sign on her butt that says, reserved for Dr. Deal. I lost it. I could not stop laughing when she came up and nobody knew what was going on. And anyway, I still to this day laugh and so did Hans. So luckily she had a good sense of humor about it. I know, that was just the best. It was so good and, every, and, and they were so cool about it. And everybody watching was just, it was hilarious. Right. <laughs> uh, Tisha wants to know, Susan, do you have a website or a YouTube channel? I don't. Um, you can go to our church website, southbaychurch.net. And like I said, you can click the, click the cooking school link. Um, but we've, uh, we've, my husband and I have talked about developing a, a plant-based website just for, for, um, for, for recipes, for me, for whoever we can get. But it's still in the works. Yeah, that's fantastic. It was so great catching up with you guys again. Do you guys have any last minute questions for Susan or John or any of today's recipes, which are already, I know you guys say, where's the recipes, but I swear if you just go to YouTube, I just checked it myself. I put it in even before the show start, starts. It's called the show notes. You click more, it's a little upside down triangle. It's there, I checked it. Linda says that was also the funniest thing she ever saw at the conference. Yeah, we have it on tape somewhere. I think we could find it. And, yeah, know, maybe 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 do a bloopers reel or something yeah. like that. Yeah, good one. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyways, it was so great catching up with you. I really appreciate you, you doing these delicious recipes for us. Yeah, you're welcome. It was great to be here on your show, and I hope that um, people are encouraged and and on their path of plant based and. It's the way to go. It's the way wow. to be. Well, you are welcome anytime. And I hope you guys will come back tomorrow. We actually have a double header every now and then. That just happens because I double book before I was committing to a regular time. So we have Dr. Rosanne Alviera at 11 a.m. And we have Dr. Stephanie Burr, who spent some time working at True North at 1 p.m. So thank you guys so much for watching. And thanks again, John and Susan, for all you do to make the South Bay and the world a healthier and more delicious place. Welcome. All right. See you guys. Bye.